Thank you for joining us today at our annual meeting and for your commitment to the Salt Lake Chamber. Let me begin by stating the obvious. This year has been one that will not be forgotten. Beginning with the most significant event, the Chamber has worked tirelessly to mitigate the economic consequences of the pandemic and plan for recovery. Many of you have contributed and continue to participate in leading our efforts. When the pandemic hit Utah amid confusion and uncertainty, we developed a forward-looking plan known as Utah Leads Together. It included input from our best and brightest and was the first comprehensive plan of action introduced in the United States. The Chamber created one of the first websites to provide information and resources for businesses and individuals, and then we turned it over to the state to become the official clearinghouse for Utah and a prototype for other states. This year, the Chamber was able to bring the legacy of KSL News Radio program Speaking on Business back to the Chamber. Science Bank graciously transferred the program to us, allowing the Chamber to magnify the voices of business across the state and showcase our members who are doing innovative things and leading efforts to adapt and overcome the coronavirus. The Chamber's Utah Jobs Opportunity Foundation created the Main Street Preservation Grant to sustain rural and minority-owned businesses. This would not have been possible without the generous contribution of $500,000 from WCF Insurance. The short-term grants created through this program kept doors open for local businesses while they waited for PPP loans and other federal assistance. And many recipients have shared that this was necessary for their survival. In conjunction with providing grant money to businesses, we also wanted to provide a framework of durable guidance that could carry us into a better normal. Toward this end, we launched Stay Safe to Stay Open, a critical and ambitious campaign to curtail the spread of the virus while supporting the economy. The campaign encourages businesses to take a pledge to follow seven safety guidelines provided by the Utah Department of Health. This pledge has become the official seal of approval for the state, and our goal is to have 90% of targeted businesses take the pledge. I hope you already have, and if not, you can go to stayopenutah.com to participate. Another initiative I want to tell you about is the exciting new partnership between the Chamber's Utah Community Builders Foundation and the David Eccles School of Business. The program is called Hope Corps. Somewhat like the Peace Corps, the Hope Corps involves students from most all of our universities across the state whose internships and summer employment were adversely affected by the coronavirus. Through the program, students can take their knowledge and talents and share them with companies, organizations, and community programs in need. Hope Corps is only one of the initiatives underway through Utah Community Builders. The program remains focused on the state of good and addressing challenges like intergenerational poverty, behavioral health, immigration, and child care. All of these have been new programs in 2020. The work of the Chamber has been unceasing and also absolutely necessary in the midst of a pandemic and ensuing economic crisis. I want to reassure you, however, that all the traditional work of the Chamber is also proceeding without interruption. Prior to the pandemic, the Chamber conducted the Clear the Air Challenge alongside our partners UCARE and TravelWise. It was our 11th such challenge, and we received broad community support and participation. Collectively, our participants this year eliminated over 97,500 trips, saved almost 1.6 million miles, 476.4 tons of CO2, saved a half a million dollars, and burned 1.9 million calories in just 29 days. The Chamber has also continued its focus on fostering the Rural Workforce Network. Alongside EDCU and the Department of Workforce Services, the Chamber issued a call to action for businesses to connect job seekers who may want to stay in their local communities to employers who offer remote work and believe in a distributed workforce. While this program began before the coronavirus, it has accelerated our change in workforce distribution and this program has become more important than ever. We are pleased by all that has been accomplished this year, and we recognize that without you, our members, none of it would have been possible. We also recognize the core function of the Chamber, 
to serve as the voice of business in Utah. And here we also have good things to report. Our policy committees and government relations team had a successful 2020 legislative session where the legislature was very supportive of Utah's economy and all those who benefit from economic opportunity. Overall, the chamber tracked 244 bills, issued 15 priority vote bills, supported 71 bills, opposed nine, and recognized 90% of our legislature as business champions for their support of a pro-economy and pro-business agenda. More specifically, the end of the session had the largest increase for education funding in recent history. And while changes needed to be made in following special sessions due to the pandemic, at the time, it was a widely celebrated solution to Utah's immediate tax issues. The legislature also made significant strides in rural economic development, transportation, electric vehicle infrastructure, housing, and workforce development. It was this continued focus on the economy that prepared our state to address the pandemic and maintain economic indicators that have been the envy of the nation. Despite all the good things happening in our state, there is no doubt we will still have serious challenges ahead. The good news is we have a solid foundation to build upon. And to start that rebuilding, the Chamber has launched a new initiative we hope you will support. It's called the Roadmap to Recovery, a coalition of business leaders to set the mile markers for our journey back to economic prosperity. I believe it is imperative for us to collect, distill, and spell out clear policy priorities the Chamber can then champion to our local, state, and federal leaders. You will hear more about this in the future, and we look forward to your guidance. Finally, I want to speak about a matter that has appropriately been on all of our minds. As you know, under the leadership of our former Chair, Linda Wardell, the Chamber focused on the gender wage gap. With the leadership of our new Chair, Craig Wagstaff, our efforts will center on justice and equality of opportunity. Our objective is that diversity and inclusion become more than just a movement, that we will work together to ensure change that appropriately reflects the dynamic culture of Utah and continues to open opportunities for everyone. The business community has a critical role and responsibility in this effort. And for this reason, we have convened a series of lunch discussions around the subject, and now we plan to expand to the broader community. We invite you to join us by looking internally at your own organization and identifying those who can participate in any number of chamber forums, committees, and leadership opportunities. And please stay tuned for much more on this subject. You have all heard me tell the story before how during the Great Recession, Utah leaders set the goal to be the best economy in the nation. And of course, you all know we accomplished that goal. As I said, the good news is our foundation is still strong, as evidenced by the state's economic indicators still leading the nation today. It is true that the road ahead is uncertain, but the pioneer spirit that built Utah out of an inhospitable desert is alive and well today. It is reflected in the work of the Chamber, where our employees are engaged not simply in a job, but in a mission. We're inspired by the importance of our work and sustained by your commitment to the cause. We're passing through a challenging time, but our history is one of overcoming even greater uncertainties and being strengthened in the process. Each day we get a little stronger, the future becomes a little clearer, and we know a comeback is already on its way. Thank you for your support of the Chamber and your continued contribution to these many successes.